Yes, what's up guys? What's going on? Welcome back to the Walinho channel. As we all know, the transfer domino between Atletico Madrid and Chelsea and Man City has finally been done. It's finished. All teams have gotten what they've wanted. Chelsea have gotten the sale of Conor Gallagher for pure profit, completed to Atletico Madrid. Atletico Madrid have completed the signing, as you can see on your screen right here, of Julian Alvarez from Manchester City. <clears throat> and now Atletico Madrid have sold Samuel Morodion to Chelsea for $35 million. So without further ado, let's get right into all the news that we have to discuss for today, revolving around football and most importantly, around Chelsea. Let's do it, guys. So, as you can see right here, Julian Alvarez to Atletico Madrid. Here we go. Deal in place for 75 million euros. Fixed fee plus 20 million euro add-ons is insane. Julian has accepted the proposal for five-year deal after talks with his agent Hidalgo today. Man City signed Julian for 14 million pounds and he's now their record sale for 95 million euro package. If there's one thing that Manchester City know how to do, besides run an outstandingly well-performing football club, is make sales. Manchester City know the perfect time to sell their players at the perfect price. Listen, they got good money for Gabriel Jesus, for Zinchenko, for Raheem Sterling. You could argue Cole Palmer left them for arguably a lot less than he should have left them for. But if we're being completely honest, they couldn't have really gotten any better than 50 million. And that's still a pretty good sum of money for an academy player, pure profit, remember that. And now Julian Alvarez, they're making what seems to be 80 million profit on him, outstanding business by Man City. They're not going to be too hurt by this as Erling Haaland is obviously the main guy, the main number one striker that Man City want to rely upon. Now, does this mean they're going to bring someone from the academy through to be that number two striker? Or are they going to go purchase a number two striker in the transfer window? I think they'll do the second option. But um, outstanding business from them. Uh, and outstanding business from Atletico Madrid showing true ambition to want to compete in La Liga this season. Listen. We all thought La Liga was going to be done and dusted before the season started because Real Madrid, adding Kylian Mbappe to a nearly invincible squad, only lost one game last season in the Copa del Rey against, um, or in La Liga, I forgot what it was, against Atletico Madrid. Every other game, they didn't lose Real Madrid. Undefeated season besides that one game. And now adding Mbappe on top to that, it's insane. Their team is so freaking stacked. So we all rode off La Liga. We thought Real Madrid is going to take this by the scruff of the neck and back-to-back -back champions once more now barcelona they've added danny olmo in the here we go la mina mal has exploded to another level and i'm sure barca will look to add one or two more players before the window closes hansi flick is now their manager so they've upgraded in a lot of departments now atletico madrid doing serious business bringing in robin lenormand quality center back as we saw in the euros to replace mario hermoso bringing in Connor Gallagher in the midfield, that workhorse engine that Diolo, that Diego Alcholo Simeone absolutely adores. He'll be replacing uh, the departing Saul, who funnily enough was a former Chelsea player as well. And now Julian Alvarez to replace the outgoing Alvaro Morata. And also they brought in Sorloth from Villarreal. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that so far for Atleti. And it seems like they're still pushing for more quality players. Hats off to them because they're showing ambition to want to challenge for the title. So fair play to them. And obviously, Julian Alvarez was the last piece of the transfer domino. As soon as his deal was signed, it's apparent that Conor Gallagher will be signed and then that Samuel Morodian will leave. So this is the news on Gallagher. We finally have the here we go by Fabrizio. Conor Gallagher to Atletico Madrid. Here we go. After late night exclusive news on his green light to Atleti, there's an okay for his move from other clubs. Five-year contract for Gallagher, 42 million euro fee to Chelsea for the English midfielder, medical booked for Wednesday. Gallagher will be announced as an Atletico Madrid player by the end of the week, 100%. And listen, looks outstanding in that kit. He'll fit right into Simeone's system, just as I said in the video yesterday. Don't want to touch too much upon him because I know that he's done as a Chelsea player. But I do want to thank him for his contributions because in the past two seasons, he really stepped up and matured as a footballer, especially last year under Poch, and showed that he's a force to be reckoned with, not only in the Premier League, but other teams in other leagues recognize his value as well. And fair play to Gallagher because he could have accepted any team in the Premier League to go to, but because that would mean having to play against his beloved Chelsea, he decided to go abroad. So hats off to Gallagher. My biggest respects to him. He deserved that banner at the end of last season that said uh, the true boy who had a dream, something like that, kind of poking fun at Mason Mount and also praising Gallagher at the same time. And honestly, 
I'll never forget that season of him being our captain, and it will always live in Chelsea memory. Sure, it was a dream come true for Gallagher to become Chelsea captain. And yeah, that chapter closes in Chelsea history. On to the next players. Good luck to Gallagher. Hope he does outstanding at Atletico Madrid. Now, the player we're getting from Atletico, Samu Omorodion. This is what Fabrizio has to say about him. So the last piece of the domino will be Samu Omorodion to Chelsea. Final fee paid by CFC will be 34.5 million pounds. Small details of players' terms negotiated right now, but parties are sure that it will get done. Gallagher to Atleti and Julian Alvarez to Atleti also already done as revealed. This is the last piece that needs to be sealed. I'm sure we'll get the here we go either by later today, probably before or a little bit after the Real Madrid game which I will preview for you guys right now. I'll give you guys my score prediction, and I'll give you guys my starting lineup prediction that I want to see a little bit later on in this video. So make sure you stay tuned all the way till the very end so you don't miss my thoughts on the preview of that game. Now, Omar Odion, he will be coming in as the striker for Chelsea. I believe that Chelsea believe will elevate our attack to another level. Now, the realistic thing is that we have to look at, we can't ignore, is that this guy is 20 years old, and has one season of top flight professional football under his belt. I believe he scored under eight goals. I think it was six goals last season for Alaves, which in the Spanish top flight is a pretty decent return for a 20 year old, nothing outstanding. But nowadays, if you have a pretty decent season, that warrants a pretty decent transfer fee as well. And listen, the Spanish international, youth international, sorry, he's gonna take place in the final of the Olympics. I'm not sure when that is, but they will be playing against France. And France have some quality players that Omarodion will be able to display himself against. And I'm sure he's a starter in the national Olympic team. And I'll be sure to try to catch at least the highlights of that game. I recommend you guys do as well, just to get a sneak peek of what Omarodion will look like on the pitch for Chelsea. Kind of his attributes, how he plays, his strengths, his weaknesses, kind of get a better general idea. Because if we're being honest, none of us have really seen this guy play. Unless you're a part Atletico Madrid fan or you're Spanish, you don't really know much about Omar Rodion if we're being completely honest. So I have no hate towards the guy. I hope he is one of the best strikers in the world and ends up being unbelievable for Chelsea because why would we throw negativity at this guy? It's not his fault that Chelsea are buying him. It's the fact that Chelsea are relying so heavily on these youngsters that have barely started their footballing careers. That's the problem we Chelsea fans have an issue with. And that goes down to the owners and the sporting directors based on their club model that they've made the team adopt adapt. So um so yeah, Samuel Morodion, he'll be joining Chelsea. Does this mean another striker domino for Chelsea? Probably Armando Broya is probably gonna leave. Dacho Fofana never played for Chelsea again, I'm sure. Uh so those two guys are gone. And Romelu Lukaku, he's going to leave. We have about four strikers that we need to get off the books, including David Washington. What the hell is going to go on with Mark Yu? Listen, guys, I have a picture later on in this video in about two minutes, and I'm going to show it to you guys, that shows the ridiculous size of Chelsea's squad. We have, I think, 45 players available to us, and that is absolutely so unnecessary. So we need to sell some players or at least loan them out before the window ends, or we're going to have severe squad morale issues in this team. Now... The next piece of news that we have to discuss is right here. Just like I mentioned, the Chelsea squad, 90-minute football, put up a post that says, here's a look at the current Chelsea squad. Samuel Morodion might be joining soon as well. We know it's pretty much confirmed. And let's take a bigger look at how many damn players we have. Oh, my God. In every position, we have three available players except for the right back position minimum three now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a video later on in this week about the two players that chelsea must keep in every single position on the pitch no more than two per position i will be strict i will be ruthless i will be harsh with my assessment of these guys in picking who genuinely deserves to play for chelsea based on what we've seen throughout their entire chelsea careers and throughout their other team's careers if they're just coming into the squad. And in preseason, I'm going to include my thoughts on that as well. Obviously, this is so many players. I don't even want to count how many there is, but not all of them can stay. A lot of them have to leave, and we all know that as Chelsea fans, hopefully we get this sorted out before the end of the window, because as I said, it's going to be a complete mess. But stay tuned for that video that I will be releasing, assessing Chelsea's current squad and who needs to stay, who needs to go. Now... Enzo Maresca was questioned about the size of his squad 
And this is what he had to say about how he feels about the team. So Mareska says, One of the reasons why I'm here is because I really think that Chelsea's squad in this moment is already very good. For sure, if we have the chance to do something to improve the level, it's good to do it. Otherwise, we'll see. He also said, We're trying different things. And for sure, the club and me, all together, we know what we need before we finish the transfer market. Hashtag CFC. So... Obviously, he knows that we're doing some work behind the scenes, trying to bring in more players. He's probably being consulted on if he thinks these players will benefit his squad. And yeah, that's it's realistic for Enzo Mariska to say that he's not hiding the truth, that we are still trying to bring in more players despite our massive squad size. But we do have to sell players as well, like he did mention in his previous press conference. Now, I like the honesty. So Enzo Mariska questioned about how long is it going to take for Chelsea to be good? He said, this is a process. You can't think after a month that everything is going to work in the right way. 100% agree. It's not something magic that you can reach in two days. That is something different. That is PlayStation, not football. Also agree. This isn't career mode, guys. It's not going to take a couple clicks of a button and then your team's going to play whatever formation you want to the perfect exact specifications that you want them to. This is real life. Players have emotions. Players have to get time to adjust to a new country, to a new language, to new people that they've never worked with. Because at the end of the day, this is their work. They have to find the right balance. They have to adapt to life in London. They have to grow up. A lot of these guys are under 23 years old. They still have a lot of growing up to do mentally. And yeah, it's going to take some freaking time, unfortunately. Which is why we're all kind of ticked off that Pochettino was let go. Because it seemed like that time had been spent together and we gelled together a cohesive squad but we all know why Poch was sacked because he wanted to keep Trevo Chalaba and Connor Gallagher and Chelsea were not going to allow that by any means necessary they'd rather sack the manager and restart their process than continue with something that looks like it was going good for once but yeah Enzo Mariska I'll be backing him if anything goes wrong it's on the board and the sporting directors now with all this transfer speculation around Chelsea, Alvarez to Atletico, Gallagher to Atletico, the domino, Omar Rodion to Chelsea, what the hell does this mean for the Victor Osimhen situation? Because apparently we're still interested in him, according to Fabrizio, because he says that nothing has changed for Osimhen. He's not considering a loan with option to buy as of today, and he will not reduce his salary. So he's strict on these terms for him to leave Napoli. He wants a permanent move away, with at least the same salary he was earning at Napoli, but obviously he'll want more if he wants to make a jump to a better team, respectively, to Napoli. Chelsea are not willing to do that. So it's either Chelsea fold in the last days of the window and offer him a permanent move or a loan with a buy option and increase or keep his salary the same, or Osimhen folds at the end of the window and he decides to accept something below his standard that he didn't want initially by joining Chelsea on Chelsea's terms. Now, what do I think is the most likely thing to happen? I think a move to Saudi is more likely for Victor Osimhen than a move to Chelsea. That's the honest truth because at the end of the day, this guy wants to secure his future and get his freaking bag, man. Chelsea will not allow him to do that, unfortunately, because we're very stubborn in our new wage structure. So someone is going to have to fold or Osiman is going to find a solution that suits him the best. And we'll see. It's going to stay all the way until transfer deadline day, believe me. I think this is going to take a very long time to get resolved. And if someone folds, we won't learn until the last days of the window. Hopefully, Osiman folds and joins Chelsea on Chelsea's turns. But yeah, that's the current Osiman situation. What do you guys think about it? Now, Enzo Maresca was asked about Angelo Gabriel. And it's pretty clear that Angelo Gabriel will be leaving on loan this season. Enzo Maresca just clarifies this in a nice way to kind of still give an opportunity for Angelo Gabriel to show something special in the last days of preseason and maybe keep himself a place in the team. But he says that Angelo is with us in this preseason. He's doing well and working well. The only thing is, because of the amount of the wingers we have, I have said many times that for young players, the best way to improve is to play and get minutes. And fair enough, he was an academy manager for many years. And for Angelo, in this moment with us, He's struggling a little bit, but we will see if he will stay with us or go on loan somewhere. Listen, he's going to go on loan. Too much competition on the right-hand side. Cole Palmer can play there and at the 10. And then Noni Madueke can play on the right. Not enough game time for Angelo Gabriel, unfortunately. But fortunately, we have the team to send him to to guarantee that game time over at Strasbourg. But yeah, best of luck to him when he does end up leaving. Now, some news about other teams before we, before we get into the Manchester... What the hell am I saying? Oh my god. Before we get into the Chelsea versus Real Madrid preseason... Last game in the U.S. preview, 
which kicks off at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Denzel Dumfries is rumored to go to Man United now, according to David Ornstein, which is pretty surprising. So he says that Dumfries does not intend to discuss new Inter Milan deal until the market closes. The 28-year-old favors an exit. He's keen on Manchester United, but this move is only possible if one Bisaka rejects West Ham and Manchester United and Inter end up swapping the two players. Now, at the present moment, Ornstein says that United prefer West Ham United for Aaron Juan Bisaka and then bringing in Masrawi instead of Denzel Dumfries. Now, Masrawi is obviously a player who could offer more on the offensive side of the pitch, and I think Man United do need that in their right backs, in their full backs in general, because Malasia always hurt and never plays. Luke Shaw a bit more solid defensively than going in the attack. Aaron Wan Bisaka, we know he offers way more on the defensive end. So they need someone that could bomb up and down the wing to an even more elite level than Diego Dalo does. So we'll see if this ends up coming true, but it seems pretty unlikely. Another move that is pretty shocking if it does come true is apparently LAFC is in active negotiations to sign Antoine Griezmann from Atletico Madrid. While a deal before the August 14th MLS deadline isn't ruled out, which is coming up in about a week, it's difficult, recording uh, reports Tom Bogert. Listen... If Griezmann is happy with his contributions to European football, he'll make this move in a heartbeat. If he's not, and he believes he could do something special with all these new signings that Atletico are bringing in to kind of build around him because in reality, he is the star player of the team, he would stay another year. If I were Griezmann, I have all this money in the world. Why not stay one more year? See if you could do something special in the Champions League. You're getting to that age where you don't have many years left at the prime of your career at the top level. So maybe give it one or two years. I'm sure LAFC will still be interested after another year. They'll want to bring in this core of French players of Hugo Lloris, uh, Olivier Giroud, who they already brought in. And Antoine Griezmann would be the cherry on top to that French core to kind of compete with the marketing scheme that Inter Miami have with their ex-Barcelona players. So these guys want to recreate the French 2018 World Cup squad. Inter Miami have the ex-Barcelona squad. You see how they're kind of going against each other in terms of marketing. That'd be a good move for Griezmann. Settle his life, live in the U.S. comfortably. But no, I believe he'll stay one more year at the 30. What do you guys think? Now, last two news of football transfers is that, before we get into the preview of Real Madrid-Chelsea, is that Dani Olmo to Barca is a here we go. Uh, 7 million in add-ons on top of a 55 million euro guaranteed package. Almo agreed on six-year deal, valid until June 2030. He wanted the Barca move, former Barca Academy product as well. And yeah, verbal agreement was in place after key mission in Leipzig for Barca director Deco, former Chelsea player, by the way. And yeah, that does it. Dani Olmo looks great in that Barcelona kit. He'll be outstanding for them, I do believe. And yeah, another top signing for Barcelona, adding to their top window that they've had so far of bringing in Hansi Flick and Dani Olmo. We'll see who they bring in. Nico Williams seems to be off the table for any club which is interesting how things turned out. It seems like it was almost a done deal with Barca. But yeah, let's see what goes on in the rest of the window. Now, the last bit of news before we get into the preview is that Richarlison is reportedly open to a move to Saudi Arabia. Keep in mind, this is from TalkSport, not the most reliable source, but I do see this possibly happening because Saudi dealmakers have expressed their willingness to meet Spurs' 60 million pound asking price for Richarlison with Al Ali as a potential destination. Listen, if Tottenham can get that money for Richarlison after doing genuinely nothing for Tottenham in his entire career there over two, three seasons now, that'd be outstanding business for Spurs. I think that's even turning a profit on Richarlison, even if it's a slight profit for what they paid to get him off Everton. In a heartbeat, you get that done if you're Daniel Levy and you bring in Dominic Solanke. You bring in a top number nine that guarantees you goals in the Premier League and you say bye to Richarlison. Yeah. That's my thoughts on it. Let's get into this freaking preview as Chelsea posted it here for one final time stateside. Thank God, because Chelsea are so bad in the United States this year. It's match day. Blues in the USA. Chelsea versus Real Madrid. Now, what is my predicted lineup for this game? Because I think Real Madrid will field a pretty strong team. If we're being completely honest, I think they will field a pretty damn strong team. Courtois has been playing. Maybe Carvajal will see his return. It depends. He did play in the Euro, so probably not, actually. Uh, Militao, I'm sure he'll play just coming back from his ACL. Maybe we'll see Alaba as well getting some game time. Ferlan Mendy, most likely, in that left back. Um, Then in the midfield, Nico Paz has been getting a lot of minutes for them. But it'll most likely be uh, 
probably Federico Valverde, probably Luka Modric, players of that regard. Aurelien Chouameni, Camavinga, one of those guys. Then up top, I wouldn't be surprised if they start using Mbappe, Endrick, Bellingham, Vinicius, Rodrigo. We're absolutely cooked regardless, those guys. Listen, I'm telling you now, I'm not predicting a Chelsea win. I think we're going to get thrashed. But I, what I'm more concerned with is seeing Chelsea have a good performance that betters on the one that we had against Man City. That we don't concede two goals in two minutes, two times in one game. That we try to keep a clean sheet, which will be virtually impossible. But we at least try to put some effort defensively on the pitch and continue scoring our goals that we've been scoring in every preseason game. That's all I want to see. Some more defensive solidity, some more idea of how to cover the spaces on the pitch. And without further ado, this is my starting lineup that I think deserves to play and that I want to see play before we inevitably get back to the Premier League in a couple weeks' time. Now, in goal, Philip Jorgensen is my number one. Honestly, I've kind of had enough of Robert Sanchez. I've seen some decent performances by him in this preseason, but also some ridiculous blunders and just some calamity in terms of his positioning, in terms of his diving technique. He just does not seem like a top 10 Premier League goalkeeper whatsoever. He deserves to be at the bottom of the table, for being completely honest. He shouldn't be our number one. So I'd rather put my faith in this young guy who's probably high on confidence now that he got his Chelsea move over the line. And yeah, let's see what this guy's made of. Hopefully it's another Petrovic situation. And yeah, he's my starting goalkeeper. Best of luck to Jorgensen. Now, my middle center back didn't have the best of games against Man City, his former team, which he was in the academy of. But I think he's our one of our only leaders in the back line and our only leaders in the team. He has to be in there to be kind of vocal and lead the team. English speaking has been pretty solid in terms of 1v1 defensive situations and covering space. It's just when the ball is at his feet. He does tend to have a mistake in him, but I think he's the best we've got. It's either him or Axel de Sassi who's just coming back from injury. I'd rather pick Tosin Adarabio and give him that middle center back role. Now, in at the left and right center backs, I've decided to switch it up a bit. So Reese James keeps his right center back role, but he will not be inverting into midfield. I think he's the most solid player we have in the right center back position available. And we just need solidity in this back line, especially against this Real Madrid team. And especially if we want to start on the front foot in the Premier League and not concede tons and tons of goals. We need our best defenders on the pitch, 100%. Reese James is one of the best at the club. Now, the other side, Renato Vega. I want to see this guy play more. We've only seen him for like five minutes in preseason. Everyone raves about how versatile of a player he is. Well, let's see it. Let's see him maybe invert into midfield a couple of times. Let's see him cover the left center back position better than how Levi Cole and Benoit Badiashil have done this preseason. Because if we're being honest, they've looked very poor, especially defensively. On the ball, not too bad, but defensively, they've been a calamity. And Renato Vega seems like he's a composed young man. Seems like he knows how to handle the ball well and not give it away in precarious situations. And seems to know how to defend well. He has a big frame on him. Let's see how he pairs up against the likes of Rodrigo, Arda Guler, Brahim Diaz, Endrik, one of these guys over on Real Madrid's right-hand side. Now, in midfield, this is my midfield four. Romeo Labia and Moises Caicedo as the double pivot with Enzo Fernandez and Dewsbury Hall as the tens. Did this work last time against Man City? No, because I don't think we have a genuine workhorse in there who will work their ass off like Conor Gallagher did. We need one like that. And Enzo Fernandez and Lavia just do not have the capability to roam around at that speed. However, Caicedo, he could offer that. If he just switches on his brain and stops being so focused on making a mistake and avoiding a mistake, he'll show his quality. We know how good he is. We know these mistakes only appear for Caicedo when he's low on confidence and he starts doubting himself. As long as he gets some confidence instilled in him by Enzo Maresca, knowing that he could be trusted with the ball at any time in the team and knowing that he could be one of the starting midfielders, I'm sure he'll do fine. And I've seen rumors about him potentially inverting into the right back role whenever we don't have the ball. Maybe that's something we could see this game. I'm a little skeptical about it still. I'd rather keep a back three. But yeah, we'll see what goes on with Caicedo. Those two are probably our strongest defensive midfielders at this time. And at the 10, I'm going with Dewsbury Hall and Enzo Fernandez because I've shifted around some players some more. I don't think Nkunku should be used in these positions despite how good he is because we need all our best players on the pitch. And Enzo Fernandez is one of our best players available. So he has to be on the pitch no matter what. I'd rather put Nkunku over on this left-hand side, have him create from the left because he's much better than Raheem Sterling, more reliable than Mihailo Mudrik. 
and at least we'll know that we have another option on the left and won't just have to keep forcing it down the right hand side because we don't trust our left wingers now on the right, we have Noni Madueke. Cole Palmer is not back for preseason yet. Nicholas Jackson isn't back for preseason. And that's why I have Mark Yu as our striker, which completes our Chelsea 11 against Real Madrid that I want to see. But this team looks a lot more balanced than the one we played against City. Mikhailo Mudrik was playing like a wingback role at times. It was very confusing. I don't think he understood the role that Maresca wanted him to play. But I think if we feel this team, we'll still lose to Real Madrid. My score prediction is 3-1. But I think it will be a much more convincing performance where we could hold our heads up high after the game and admit that Real Madrid are just on another level compared to us, but at least we're going on the right track based on the performance. That's all I want to see in this Chelsea game against Real Madrid. Hopefully you guys think the same way. We don't want to analyze too much the preseason results. It's more about how the team is performing, how they're gelling together, the chemistry they're building, and the individual performances and moments of brilliance that we see from, this play from these players. But yeah. Let me know what you guys think of my lineup down below. I'm excited to see the game later on today. And hopefully I'll get a, a match preview, match review after the game for you guys. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. And peace.